I just want to show you a couple of items about importing information from ESRI's ArcGIS software into Adobe Illustrator. Of course, predominantly, we have been talking about how to produce the art of the cartography, but in this course so far, we have not been talking about any of the science of the cartography, either from a technical aspect of projections and data sets, or from uh, the perspective of talking about uh, categorizing data for thematic maps uh, of different kinds. As it stands, if you just have Illustrator, you're not going to be able to do those kinds of operations inside Adobe Illustrator because it's a graphics package and it doesn't understand uh, the technical aspects of cartography. So it's relatively common for cartographers to operate in both an analytical GIS software package in order to do the technical aspects of the cartography and then export from there to Adobe Illustrator when it's time to actually create the art of the map. So it's very easy to do. I just wanted to show you that pretty fast. Uh, I just threw in some data here into uh, ArcGIS, uh, just a, a shapefile of the countries of the world with a graticule behind it to look like an ocean. And I just threw that into a Robinson projection. But you can certainly go through and do all different kinds of thematic themes for uh, proportional symbol maps or core pleth maps or dot density maps or whatever here inside ArcGIS and then bring it out once the science is done into uh, Adobe Illustrator. If you go down here to the layout view of the map, no doubt that many, many people learn the basics of producing some kinds of maps inside it uh, here in the layout view and really to me it is painful to do. Now that I know Adobe Illustrator, I never try to create any kind of map inside the layout. I just get way too frustrated trying to deal with all the little option buttons and dialogue menus uh, that uh, ArcMap has to try to put together a map. I just don't have uh, time for it or the patience. So I do a very, very little of the art of the cartography inside ArcMap. Here, if I were to export this, I just go over here to the layout view like this and get the uh, data lined up at the size that I want it. I make sure that the data frame is the size that I want it, and I make sure that all the data is the size that I want it, and I make sure that it is at a scale that I want. Of course, this is just a Robinson compromise projection of the entire world, so its scale is accurate at uh, a relatively limited portion of the map. It would be correct along the equator. The display scale would be the scale along the equator. And of course, if you take in uh, classes in geographic information systems and especially in the dedicated technical aspects of cartography you would talk more about the particular properties of the different projections but i did go ahead and make sure a few things first i made certain that the map here is made on the size sheet of paper that i want it to finally be so i mean this is just eight and a half by eleven size sheet of paper here in the layout view and arc map is the same size that i want the final map to be and then I would go through and make sure my margins were, margins were adjusted and then make sure that it is an appropriate scale. I want a nice round scale. So in this particular case, I am at a scale of 1 to 160 million, at least along the equator, the display scale of this Robinson projection. I went ahead and put that down so I wouldn't forget. And then if I wanted to do so, the only other thing that I probably would do, short of adding thematic information, uh, would be to go ahead and add a scale bar if I wanted to have one on the map. But I probably would not leave the scale bar as it appears here. I would go through and I would adjust it inside Adobe Illustrator anyway so it doesn't look so stock. But what I would do, okay, so what have I got here? This scale bar uh, clearly will not work. Uh, I want to have one division before zero. Let's go here. And then I would try to just go ahead and make a scale bar that sort of looks like what I might want on a map. It's getting close. I want to put the uh, label below center or something like that. And that way I just have a reference. I will know exactly how far one of those little bars is to be 2,500 miles, how far the 0 to 10,000 is. That way it will be present with the data when I go into Adobe Illustrator. Because I want to be certain that when I do the transfer between ArcMap and Illustrator that I am not uh, losing any of the technical data of my map and of course making sure the scale is correct is essential. But I don't do any other kind of cartographic manipulation here in ArcMap. 
everything else, every kind of title, any type of other type of symbology that I'm going to put on, I'm manipulating all of the different essential cartographic elements. I don't even try to do that here in ArcMap anymore. I just take it and I do that in Illustrator. So go ahead and do the science of your map here in ArcMap. Go to Illustrator for the art. So many people were doing this apparently, doing the science of the map inside uh, ArcMap and then doing the art of the map inside a graphics package that finally ESRI gave us the ability to just export what we see here in the layout view to uh, Illustrator. So if I go to File and I go to Export Map, File, Export Map, there are of course, as you probably know if you've worked with ArcMap before, there are many, many different options for uh, exporting the map. Uh, we've got PDF, of course. Uh, EPS is a vector file. In earlier versions of ArcMap, uh, EPS, this vector format, is the one that you would have to export your map to and then bring the EPS file into Illustrator. So that's still an option if you have earlier versions. You do want to be sure that you're exporting to a vector-based file format. You don't want to export to a PNG or a JPEG, for instance, here, because those are just rasters, and they're not going to be able to be manipulated inside the vector-based Illustrator package. So you either want to go with like an EPS, which is a vector-based file format, or if you notice right here, AI file. It will now, this version of ArcMap, will allow you to export directly to an Adobe Illustrator file, which will allow you to open it up in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to do that, and now I've got it ready to open up someplace else. So just to wrap things up here, I want to open up that AI file that we exported from ArcMap. Notice that I have come back over to the Mac platform to do the art. That's no problem. I do have this error message that talks about uh, how the text has to be updated. I'm not exactly sure what version of an AI file that ArcMap exports, but uh, I'm sure it's not the most recent one as you can see here. So you may have to update some text. But the less effects that you do in ArcMap anyway, the less that you're going to have to worry about uh, having anything not port over correctly. You'll notice over here in the Layers menu that ArcMap already begins to export uh, many of the different data layers and objects on the map into different layers for you already. So always the first thing that I do is look over and see the way that ArcMap has done that. Sometimes I like it, sometimes it can be a, a rather aggravating way to divide up the map. But it does look like we have the countries in one layer, actually a sub-layer of this layer. We got the graticule here. And then, see, I would probably trash that. I don't need that. I'll create my own border. So this is scale information. And then I would move these out and get rid of that layers. If you've done some more sophisticated things in ArcMap than I just did here, your layers may be more complicated, but the first thing I would do is get those layers squared away. I will also point out to you that when information comes in from ArcMap, most of the time there is a clipping mask on the layers, so immediately after getting my layers squared away, I will go in, probably release the clipping mask, just so that I don't have to worry about that release clipping mask. That also means that when I do that, see the difference now, now all of the countries can be selected. But that also probably means, let me lock the graticule, that there is this empty box, because that's what the clipping mask was that is generated once you release the clipping mask. So I go ahead and delete that so that I don't have that extra box with no fill and no stroke in there. Might have the same thing on the graticule. Yeah, release clipping mask, delete that. Maybe then go ahead and group the graticule together. Now you're basically set up and ready to do whatever art you're going to do to this to make it a polished final map. You may notice, depending on what scale your shapefile dataset was created, a lot of the line work may require simplification or smoothing so that it doesn't look quite so jumbled like this, but that's work you can do in Illustrator, or it's work that you can take care of if you use a data set that's appropriate to the scale of the map that you're creating anyway. While I'm on the subject of scale, obviously make very, very certain that you don't mess up the scale here. If you're working in the hybrid environment where you do all the science of your map in ArcMap and then you come over to Illustrator to do all of the art of the map, the problem is that you've broken the link between this and the data. Illustrator just understands this as a picture, a vector picture. But just a picture nonetheless, it doesn't understand it as a shapefile. I've broken the link to those shapefiles. So if you discover that you've done something wrong with the science of your map, there's no way to go back from Illustrator into ArcMap and get the data back. You're going to have to go back into ArcMap, 
pull up your project and readjust and then re-export into Illustrator and it can be a big pain. So it's very, very important when you're doing cartography between ArcMap and Illustrator that you're a hundred percent certain that everything is correct as far as the technical and scientific aspects by the time you leave ArcMap. Uh, I've had situations where a student has realized that they've exported the map accidentally at the wrong scale and they've done a whole bunch of other work. When the student realizes that they have exported the map at the wrong scale, there's no way to go put it back into ArcMap. They have to go back to the original ArcMap file, adjust the scale, and then come back into Illustrator. And then potentially do a whole lot of work over again. So make certain that the technical and scientific aspects of the map are correct before you leave ArcMap. One thing to watch out for is that obviously here in Illustrator, it's very easy to accidentally come through and resize the data. And if I do that, obviously my scale is no longer correct. So undo that, make certain that you're using uh, your layers and locking your layers when you get everything squared away because you don't want to accidentally change something up. If you change it at all, of course, then your representative fraction will no longer be correct. Of course, you could uh, recalculate your representative fraction if you absolutely had to, if you know how to do that by hand. But it is the case with the bar scale down there. It's one of the characteristics of those graphic scales that if you resize it in proportion to your data, it will remain correct. So I have to keep it at exactly this size for this representative fraction to be correct, but I could delete the representative fraction if I needed to resize it. And then if I resize everything, I could grab it by the handles, or if I needed to very precisely scale this to 85%, you'd always want to go uniform scale, but if I said, okay, I want this to be 85% smaller, or I could go larger, now I have rescaled both the data and uh, the bar scale, so that bar scale remains correct. Of course, with all of the caveats that this is a Robinson projection and all the different kinds of distortion that it introduces in you. So please be very aware of that and make sure you don't accidentally mess up your scale at the last moment in here in Illustrator. This bar scale doesn't look terrible right now, uh, but you can take it and break it up into all of its component chunks. For instance, there's that if you need to build your own. All right, well at that point you would have all of the technical and scientific aspects of your map already done and you'd be here in Illustrator ready to employ all of the techniques that we've talked about uh, in this course to make it look really, really amazing and professional. I suppose that just about wraps up the class. I'll see you for the course conclusion.